Hi everyone, my name is Glenn Bartley and welcome to another video blog. In today's video we're going to be talking about the fairly new camera from Canon, the 5DS. Now this camera is really a pretty, pretty revolutionary camera in that it has 50.6 megapixels. That's the highest ever thrown into a digital SLR camera, um, even well going past the Nikon um, D800, D900 um, options, 50 megapixels. That's a ton of pixels to throw onto uh, a DSLR sensor. Um, so it's a, obviously a very, very exciting camera for people who maybe used to use medium format, studio photographers, wedding photographers, commercial photographers, but that's not what I am. I'm a wildlife photographer. I shoot birds mostly. And so this camera was kind of interesting in that theoretically, even if you crop down to the 1.6 uh, crop sensor like I usually use on my 7D Mark II, you have about the same amount of megapixels as the 7D would have. So in theory, you, you potentially have a camera that's kind of a two-in-one. You, you can shoot landscapes when you want, you've got the benefit of all those 50 megapixels, and if you wanna shoot birds, you can switch it over to the 1.6 crop mode and have, in theory, a very comparable camera. So I wanted to get my hands on one of these and the folks at b &H Photo Video were nice enough to lend me one and take it out in the field, do a little test shooting and just to see, see what I thought and I thought I'd share those findings with you guys. So let's talk a little, just a few, a few more specifications of this new camera. Other than the, the massive amount of megapixels, it doesn't have a lot of really new features. Um, it's kind of brought in some of the new stuff that came in in the 7D Mark II and otherwise it's fairly similar to the 5D Mark III in terms of dynamic range and ISO performance, very similar um, to the 5D Mark III. But what you do get, which is nice, is for example, um, in the movie shooting mode, you now have that servo, um, you can track a moving subject in the video, which is kind of nice. We'll talk a little bit more about video in a second. Um, the other really nice thing from a usability standpoint is um, if you guys uh, watched or read any of my reviews on the 7D Mark II, you'll know that they changed a lot of the custom settings and made the camera even more customizable in terms of your autofocus settings, allowing for you to, you to use a couple of buttons for back bu button focusing. And the 5DS brings that in to the equation, so it's very customizable in terms of how you focus on things. It's got a great autofocus system. It's, again, it's, Canon's really interesting. You know, it's not like the 7D Mark II settings, autofocus is exactly the same as the 5DS, or is exactly the same as the 1DX. They all have a slightly different configuration of autofocus points and which ones are the cross type and all these things. But at the end of the day, they're all very, very good um, in terms of tracking and grabbing onto subjects. So I took this, I took this camera out into the field um, the other morning and was just shooting some oyster catchers down at a local spot and just tracking them around. And, and it was, you know, right away, as soon as I started shooting, this camera felt slow to me. I'm used to the very snappy 7D Mark II. I'm not talking about autofocus acquisition. More what I'm talking about is frame rate and buffer. So the 7D Mark II shoots at 10 frames a second and the buffer is something like 30, 30 raw files, which is very, very rarely fill. But on this camera, five frames a second and a 14 frame buffer, um, there was a moment where the oyster catcher started kind of bathing and putting some uh, water on his back and very quickly the buffer was filled and the camera was kind of at a slowdown trying to record um, these these images to to this to the card which was very frustrating because you're you're obviously missing action um, other than that it's, it's very very similar interface wise to the 72 so there wasn't a lot there wasn't really a lot of different I played around with going in the one the full full frame crop mode and going into the 1.6 when you go into the 1.6 crop mode you get a, a grayed out outside of the of the viewfinder and so you can tell what you're framing up. And then when you import those into Adobe Camera Raw, you'll still have all of that data if you want it, but it will automatically be cropped in to the 1.6 crop. So that's, that's quite nice. But here's the problem. So with the oyster catchers, it wasn't, it wasn't that big of a deal because they're fairly confiding birds. You can get pretty close to them. But what if you're shooting a really small bird in the frame? and even that 1.6 crop is still kind of small in the frame. If you want to focus really accurately on the bird's eye, for example, and the bird is so small in the frame, even on a 1.6, and then you go to a 1.0 crop body, 
all you can do is put that focus point kind of on the bird's head and you can't really get it that accurately. So for me, I didn't really feel like, you know, just entering into the crop mode was sort of the same thing as shooting with a crop body as far as focusing accuracy goes. Um, what would be really interesting is if in the future, I'm sure that we're going to see mirrorless cameras coming into the SLR world and electronic shutters. So theoretically, if you have a mirrorless camera, there's no reason why when you went between full frame and crop mode, the actual image in your viewfinder couldn't zoom into that crop mode. Now, if that happened, you could, you could really have the best of both worlds and you could shoot landscapes. And when you can get really close to your subject, shoot full frame. And when not, you switch to the crop mode, the viewfinder zooms in, you can focus really accurately. If this camera had that, I think I'd be buying one. Because it doesn't, and because of that slower frame rate, and, a, and the slower buffer, it's still, it's amazing that it can shoot at five, five frames a second and record all that data, but it's too slow. It's too slow for a wildlife photographer. It's, you miss action. And if you're somebody who shoots in the field and you're not always able to get as close to your subjects as you want, like I am, it just, it just doesn't seem like the camera for me at this point. It's an amazing camera. If you shoot mostly from a blind, if you're shooting controlled subjects, backyard birds, um, larger birds or if you're in a place like maybe down in florida where a lot of stuff is tame and you can get really close it's a pretty impressive sensor um i'll link to some full frame raw files if you want to download them and check them out um, but it's a very very impressive uh resolution camera the other thing that's worth contemplating though is do you really need 50 megapixels how big was the last print you made have you made any prints 40 by 60 inches recently um because realistically, as fun as it is to zoom into 100% on a 30 inch monitor and look at those, those images in a real world setting, I don't know how many people really need 50 megapixels. So something to consider for yourselves. Um, those of you who are shooting already with the 5D3 might be thinking, well, should I upgrade? I already have a full frame camera. This one has more megapixels. And that's a very valid consideration. Um, the 5D Mark III shoots a little bit faster, six frames a second, as opposed to five. Um, and obviously you're getting a ton more resolution. So for those people shooting with a 5D3, it's definitely a little bit of a tougher decision whether to upgrade. One thing you might want to consider though is if you're somebody who shoots really a lot of video and if you're very serious about your video, this camera brings in uh, one kind of new neat little feature, which is a built-in time-lapse movie mode, which is cool. You can shoot time-lapses and it stitches them all together and spits out a, a time-lapse video. That's sweet. Um, and it does have that servo autofocusing that I mentioned before, but what it lacks is a direct HDMI out for uncompressed video, which I think for um, people who are really serious about video is quite important. And it also doesn't have a headphone jack. So my gut tells me that people who are really serious about um, high, high quality digital SLR video, they're gonna probably wanna stick with the 5D Mark III until the 5D Mark IV comes out, which I believe is scheduled to maybe get announced later this year or early in 2016. So overall, it's an amazing camera. I think that studio photographers, commercial photographers, wedding photographers, landscape photographers, people who don't need that really fast frame rate are gonna be pretty excited about getting their hands on this. People who print big, like landscape photographers often print really big, so uh, I think they're probably drooling to get their hands on this thing. But for me, and maybe for you, if you're a wildlife photographer, and especially if you're a bird photographer, I'm not gonna be buying one. Um, it's just, not fast enough and I just don't see how the crop mode is really going to benefit me. Um, so um, it's a great camera. It might suit your needs. I don't think it suits my needs, but that's a choice that you'll have to make for yourself. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks again and we'll see you soon.